Today's elimination was... what's the right word? Oh yeah, bullshit, garbage, crap! Who even allowed this to happen? Not only did Gabby get eliminated, but she was eliminated in the dumbest way possible. She literally, basically, eliminated herself, and even by accident. I didn't need to see her win the season, but I expected her to go at least after Aiden and Jake, but more importantly, to lose fair and square after playing the game with all she could give, and not because a damn phone slipped out of her hand. Slipped, I wish it had slipped, that phone literally flew out of her hand into the ocean. It's just... It's not a bad placement for her, and the episode itself, it was pretty good, but the elimination was handled so poorly. We'll discuss it in a minute, just know that I'm very disappointed Gabby left, and especially that she left this way. This is just not fair, damn it. Gabby! No! Gabby! No! Rhea is up to no good again as she keeps trying to get on Ali's good side. To do so, she even gave her the very same advice she gave Connor in episode 2 of season 2 about how you shouldn't pretend to be someone else and all. Which is a bit confusing because she's clearly not following this advice herself right now. And I just hate how incoherent this woman is. So much so that at times it becomes extremely hard to tell who is the real Rhea. Is it the kind, decent, wannabe Bollywood actress or the scheming, conniving villain? Given where her story seems to be headed, it's clear good Rhea is the real one, but it doesn't feel coherent with the way she's been behaving this season and in season 2. If she really was a good person deep down, then it would have shown a little more than this. In fact, after giving Ali this advice, she admits the person she told this to the first time, aka Connor, is someone she truly cares about. Which clearly hints at these two eventually getting back together. But at this point, is there someone who still wants them to? I I'm genuinely asking please let me know in the comments. It feels like the writers just spent the entire season just reiterating how those two are not a good match, but then in the end they have them end up together anyway as if all that fighting and lying didn't matter in the slightest. And if you think about it, this is the very same thing that happened between Tom and Jake. In fact, what is it that Patreons often say? Jake, forget Tom and focus on you. And then, Rhea is a parasite, move on Connor. Fans just don't want these people together anymore after you show how toxic of a couple they are. I did like Connor and Rhea together, especially at first, and even this season I was initially hoping they would eventually work things out and end up together, but now Rhea has been treating Connor like shit for so long that it just doesn't feel right for him to take her back. I just can't forget how awful she's been to him. In fact, the other day I actually thought it would have been better if Rhea ended up with Alec and Connor came back for a fourth season and started dating Lil instead. Remember Lil from season 1? Yeah, her. In the greetings people bought, Lil both admitted that she's still single and that she thinks Connor is very handsome, so boom, perfect couple right there. Lil is actually a good woman and Connor deserves just that. It also helps that they're pretty much the same age. Aiden then breaks the news of Alec and Rhea's kiss to everyone else, but it seems like no one reacted as Aiden or even I expected. Connor just pretends he doesn't care about this in the slightest, and he is absolutely over Rhea now, yet at the very end of the episode he's found crying on the dock about, well, a lot of stuff, a lot of his problems, but mostly about his romance with Rhea. Apparently, not only Connor never earned a penny for himself in his entire life, and he simply inherited his dad's fortune, but he even admits he actually came back into the game with such determination simply because he still wanted to help out Rhea. He was hoping that by getting her eliminated she would eventually stop it with her villainous persona and would take him back. And to think he said he was over her in episode 6. I just hope they'll handle this better than the Jake and Tom drama, and also hope they'll give Rhea a huge redemption there. She really needs to prove that she cares for Connor just as much as he cares for her. Otherwise, don't make them end up together, please. Today's challenge, despite being really something, something I hope to forget very soon, it also introduced a pretty cool twist with the instant elimination, which is also, surprisingly, the very first time something like that happens in this venture camp. The campers have to film four TikToks in pairs, and the person with the worst ones out of the last few campers to complete the challenge will go home. Pretty convoluted, but okay. 
One thing that bothered me was how Crystal said that producers thought the vote out thing was getting boring. And what? Now it's getting boring? Take the pre-merge instead and most of its eliminations. They should have come up with a few twists there, like an advantage, a totem, a team swap or a fake elimination. I don't mind such a twist now, but I would have preferred to have some before as well. I don't know what was more cringeworthy though, those TikTok moves or Connor not understanding the modern world. Because sometimes it's endearing to see him so out of place, like in episode 13 with the VR simulators, but today I just couldn't watch, his jokes were ah. Uh. Although, trust me, you don't need to be 50 to not know what the gritty, the renegade or the wop dance are. Because before this day I had no clue either, and I sure miss the days when I didn't know. Even though I'm very disappointed this is probably the last we'll see of Gabby and Gret together, I was glad that they at least had them partner up for the challenge because they were such a cool duo. And I guess I'd say that screen time wise their time together was handled pretty well these past few episodes as they didn't really overdo it with this friendship. For instance, had they both stayed in the game and kept being this close, this nice, this friendly, then I guess they might have become a little boring to watch or even annoying to some, so the fact that they didn't get that many episodes together kinda makes their friendship feel a little more wholesome and special. This of course doesn't mean that I wouldn't mind watching an hour long documentary on this friendship. And even though Gabby stopped her halfway through it, I'm also very glad Gret decided to apologize to Gabby's face for the way she treated her. It was a little too quick, but at least it happened. Although Jake's growth happened a little bit too suddenly in my opinion, I am glad to see him actively trying to be a good person and get further into the game. He was more bearable than ever. Bearable. Today he said he really needs to learn to trust people more if he wants to win this game, and for a moment I actually thought that was a pretty smart thing for him to say until I remember that trusting others too much was precisely his main issue in season 1. He doesn't need to trust others more, trusting Ellie was what caused him and Tom to be eliminated in the first place in season 1, he simply needs to think straight and go from being twinky winky to thinky winky and avoid losing his cool every 2 minutes. He he is learning though how to become a better player and a better person, that's already plenty. It really did him credit how he was actively trying to be nice to Ali and how he was willing to listen to Connor's issues on the dock. This is probably the best version of Jake we ever saw. So the way Ria's advice resonated with her, the way she said she's not too sure she's comfortable with being considered a hero, and the fact that she almost made Jake meet his untimely demise, it all makes me suspect Ali will do a complete 180 turn next episode and will join the villains, perhaps convincing them to vote out Twinkie Winky first. She might indeed pull a Rhea and become some sort of twist villain, and admittedly, given the way she's behaved the entire season, this wouldn't really feel that much out of character for her. Unfortunately, her behavior this season doesn't really seem too much in line with season 2 Ali, but season 2 Ali was really boring, she didn't really have anything going on, so yeah, I wouldn't mind this. At this point, if she intends to actually join the alliance, then I really wouldn't mind having her, Gwet and Rhea discuss their common insecurities, if you will, and how much they care or need to care about other people's opinions. That would be a pretty interesting and hopefully cathartic conversation actually. Actual Ali. <laughs> Adverbs are perfect for Ali puns. The challenge ends with Gabby losing her phone with Gret's videos on it, thereby costing her new bestie the game. So Gret takes the bus of losers and… oh wait, the phone that got lost at sea was actually the one Gret had been using to film Gabby, meaning she lives to see another day whereas Gabby can wave goodbye to the 3 million dollars. Even though I'm incredibly disappointed Gabby went home like this, part of me was actually pretty relieved Gret would remain in the game. At this point I can't even tell who out of these two I actually prefer, and even though it really sucked to see Gabby go, I guess it probably would have been even lamer had Gret gone home today. It just would have been too soon, she's just had a change of heart and she still hasn't had a chance to truly get her head into the game and strategize on her own. I really hope that's gonna happen soon.
And about today's eliminated contestant, our queen, our lord and savior Gabby, I knew she was not gonna win the season, but I was so hoping she would stay around for a while longer, simply because she had so much more to do compared to other campers, especially most of the heroes. She even had friends and an alliance, so strategically speaking, she was doing so well for the first time in forever, but they just had to do her dirty like this. Had she been eliminated in a more appropriate way, whether it was a tiebreaker or still an instant elimination challenge where she just doesn't lose her phone, then I guess I still would have been very upset to see her go, but I could have accepted it. But this is just outrageous. She caused her own elimination and she even did it involuntarily. Had she sacrificed herself to save Gret, then I might have let it slide, but this? No. It's just not fair for such a character. If they had used such a twist to get rid of Aiden, for instance, it would have been fine by me. After all, he isn't that strong of a player or that big of a threat, so, you know, he can go in a silly way. I wouldn't mind, but I hate that they did this for Gabby. It just feels very lame. She deserved to go in a much more exciting way, honestly. In season 1, Gabby was my absolute favorite, and every minute she was on screen, she was just delightful. I loved her energy and literally everything about her, and even though she was still pretty likable this season 2, I really feel like she wasn't used to her fullest potential. Before her villain era, I was hoping her relationship with Ellie would go through a hard time so that it would eventually strengthen their bond, and as a villain, I was truly hoping she would finally learn to strategize and think ahead more, but none of this actually happened and that was so disappointing. Her villain arc and even her friendship with Gretz were actually great surprises, still both could have really used some more screen time to just develop in a more satisfying way. Also, Evil Gabby, or however you wanna call her, she wasn't really used in the best of ways this season either, so for the third time in a row, if we count Adventure Camp, she was pretty forgettable and her presence barely changed anything. Especially because, quote unquote, good Gabby always came out victorious every single time there was a conflict with her other self, so there was tension there, sure, but nothing more. I even thought she would eventually at least talk Red into turning against Alec and Rhea, but again, that didn't happen. At this point, if someone deserves to win, I guess it would probably be either Alec or Gret. Personally, I'm rooting for Gret. And not only because I love doing Gret punts, but because she's a fighter, she's grown a lot, and because despite being a villain, she's not a bad person. She really feels like winner material. It doesn't really help though that she hasn't really done a lot before the grill breakup. I'm really curious to see what she's gonna do in the next episode. Let me know if you have some theories. And of course, as always, share your thoughts on the episode and on Gabby, I still can't believe she's gone. And with that being said, I thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Ciao! And goodbye Gabby, you will be missed. Oh god, it hurts so much. <laughs>